Hello everyone, Dark of All Trades here. Now for those of you who have been watching me for any length of time, you know one of the main points of this channel is to investigate why people believe what they do. As an atheist and a skeptic, I'm always curious to understand the perspectives of those who hold different views. After all, the evidence for atheism seems quite clear to me, but I know that's not the case for everyone. Recently, a video from a channel called Daily Dose of Wisdom caught my attention. This channel has been on my radar for a little while now with videos that sometimes toe the line between obviously not worth my time and borderline response worthy. Well today, they presented a video titled One Huge Reason I Can't Be an Atheist. I have to admit, I am intrigued. If it's a huge reason, maybe this video will offer something resembling a compelling argument that will make me reconsider my own stance on the matter. In any case, let's dive in and see what this huge reason is all about. Who knows, it may even convince some of you to join me in the ranks of non-belief, or perhaps it'll shake the very foundations of my atheism, creating more non-non-believers. There's only one way to find out. The idea that life arose from the primordial soup is quite literally unscientific. Here's why. The claim that the idea of life arising from a primordial soup is quite literally unscientific is an oversimplification. The primordial soup theory proposed by scientists like Alexander Oparin and J.B.S. Haldane is a scientific hypothesis about the chemical and environmental conditions that may have led to the emergence of the first simple life forms on early Earth. While the details of this theory are still debated by scientists, it represents a well-reasoned attempt to explain a natural process based on empirical evidence, rather than invoking any supernatural explanations. The primordial soup theory suggests that in the oxygen-poor, energy-rich environment of early Earth, simple organic compounds could have accumulated and undergone chemical reactions that eventually gave rise to the first primitive life forms. It's important to note that the primordial soup theory is not the only scientific hypothesis about the origins of life. Researchers have proposed alternative scenarios, such as life originating around deep-sea hydrothermal vents or on clay surfaces. The precise mechanisms by which life emerged from non-living matter remain an active area of scientific investigation and debate. However, dismissing the entire field of origin of life research as unscientific is an oversimplification that does not reflect the nuanced evidence-based nature of this scientific inquiry. While there are certainly open questions and uncertainties, the primordial soup theory and other hypotheses represent genuine attempts to understand a fundamental question about the natural world using the scientific method. Ultimately, the validity or invalidation of any scientific origin of life theory has no direct bearing on the question of whether a deity exists. The existence or non-existence of a god is a separate philosophical and theological question that cannot be settled solely by the scientific evidence regarding abiogenesis. A person's atheism or theism should be based on a broader consideration of philosophical arguments and empirical evidence, rather than resting on the fate of any single scientific theory. Darwin simply assumes his theory calls for evolving from something that's there in the first place. Here he writes in a letter to a friend in 1871, if, and oh what a big if, we could conceive in some warm little pond that a protein compound was chemically formed ready to undergo still more complex changes. By even now, I'm not surprised that the claim that Darwin simply assumes his theory calls for evolving from something that's there in the first place is a mischaracterization of Darwin's actual perspective. The quote provided from a letter Darwin wrote in 1871 does not accurately represent his full reasoning on the origins of life. In the full context of the letter, like Darwin is wont to do, Darwin was acknowledging the uncertainty around how the first simple life forms emerge, which he referred to as a warm little pond, where a protein compound was chemically formed ready to undergo still more complex changes. This reflects Darwin's recognition that his theory of evolution by natural selection did not directly address the separate question of how life originally arose from non-living matter. Darwin was well aware that his theory of evolution assumed the prior existence of some form of replicating organism. He did not claim to have a complete explanation for the origin of life itself. Rather, his focus was on demonstrating how the mechanism of natural selection could drive the diversification and adaptation of living things over time once those initial life forms were present. The origin of life and the process of evolution by natural selection are distinct scientific questions, both of which remain subjects of ongoing investigation and debate. Darwin's theory of evolution does not hinge on having a fully solved explanation for the first appearance of life on Earth. In fact, there are many theists who accept the theory of evolution by means of natural selection. 
These are often known as theistic evolutionists. The existence of this group of people shows that theism and evolution are not necessarily mutually exclusive. But by selectively quoting Darwin's hypothetical musing about the warm little pond, this critique misrepresents Darwin's actual perspective and reasoning. Darwin did not simply assume the existence of the first living things. He acknowledged this as an open question that was separate from, but necessary for, the validity of his evolutionary theory. Dismissing Darwin's theory based on an incomplete understanding of his reasoning is an overly simplistic approach that does not do justice to the nuance of this scientific discourse. A more intellectually honest evaluation would consider Darwin's views in their full historical and scientific context, rather than cherry-picking quotes to paint an inaccurate picture. Now Richard Dawkins, contemporary Oxford zoologist, quote, Darwin made it possible to be an intellectually fulfilled atheist. You can only say that Darwin made it possible to be an intellectually fulfilled atheist if you believe that that prior question, where does life come from in the first place, is either trivially easy to answer or in some basic way doesn't matter. Okay, let's take a look at the quote by Richard Dawkins, stating that Darwin made it possible to be an intellectually fulfilled atheist. This statement reflects a specific philosophical perspective rather than a straightforward scientific claim. It's important to recognize that the origin of life, known as abiogenesis, is a separate scientific question from the theory of evolution by natural selection. Darwin's work focused on demonstrating how the adaptation and diversification of living organisms could occur through the mechanism of natural selection, but he did not provide a complete explanation for how the first life forms came into being. The implication in this video is that if the origin of life is not easily explained, then one cannot be an intellectually fulfilled atheist, based on Darwin's work. However, this again oversimplifies the relationship between evolutionary theory and atheistic worldviews. Many atheists, including Dawkins, have found Darwin's theory of evolution to be a powerful scientific explanation for the diversity of life on Earth, without needing to invoke supernatural or divine intervention. Their atheism is often based on a broader philosophical and empirical evaluation of the evidence for and against the existence of a deity, rather than resting solely on the specifics of abiogenesis. It's important to recognize that the claim about being an intellectually fulfilled atheist is a philosophical position and not a scientific one. Scientists can hold a range of religious and non-religious views, and the validity of evolutionary theory does not hinge on one's personal belief about the existence of a god or the origins of life. While the origin of life remains an active area of scientific investigation, the ability to be an intellectually fulfilled atheist is not solely contingent on having a complete explanation for abiogenesis. This is a complex philosophical issue that goes beyond the scope of Darwin's specific scientific contributions. Ultimately, the video's critique oversimplifies the relationship between evolutionary theory and the origins of life and atheistic worldviews. A more nuanced understanding of the interplay between science and philosophy is necessary to engage with this topic in an intellectually honest and academically accurate manner. Is that correct? It hasn't been solved, and it is actually quite an important part of the, the whole naturalistic story. The statement that it hasn't been solved and is actually quite an important part of the whole naturalistic story is a fair observation, but it does not undermine the validity of evolutionary theory or the case for atheism. It's true that the question of how life first emerged from non-living matter, known as abiogenesis, has not been conclusively solved by science. There are ongoing debates and investigations into various hypotheses and potential mechanisms for the origin of life, Again, such as the primordial soup theory, the RNA world hypothesis, and the deep sea vent theory. The precise details of how the first self-replicating molecules or primitive life forms arose remains elusive. However, it's important to recognize that the inability to definitively explain abiogenesis does not automatically lead to the conclusion that a supernatural deity must have been responsible for the creation of life. There are numerous scientific investigations and naturalistic hypotheses that seek to account for the origins of life without invoking the supernatural. These efforts reflect the scientific community's commitment to understanding the natural world through empirical observation and rigorous experimentation. Moreover, the lack of a complete explanation for the origins of life does not negate the overwhelming evidence and explanatory power of Darwin's theory of evolution by natural selection. Evolution is a well-established scientific theory that describes the diversification and adaptation of living organisms over time, regardless of the specific details surrounding the initial appearance of life on Earth. Many atheists, including prominent figures like Richard Dawkins, have found evolutionary theory to be a compelling scientific explanation for the diversity of life without needing a complete answer to the origins of life itself. 
Their atheism is often based on a broader philosophical and empirical evaluation of the evidence for and against the existence of a deity, rather than solely resting on the specifics of abiogenesis. While the origins of life remain an important part of an overall naturalistic story, as the video states, this is a separate question from the validity of evolutionary theory and its implications for one's worldview, including atheism. The inability to definitively solve the problem of abiogenesis does not undermine the extensive evidence and explanatory power of Darwin's groundbreaking work on the evolution of living organisms. And that's it for his video. So what is he actually saying here? What is his actual reason for not being an atheist? The idea that life arose from a primordial soup is quite literally unscientific. Darwin simply assumes his theory calls for evolving from something that's there in the first place. Dawkins says that Darwin makes intellectually fulfilled atheism possible, by that implying the origin of life must be trivially easy to answer. The unresolved questions around the origin of life are an important part of the whole naturalistic story. Do you agree with his position here, and perhaps are now no longer an atheist? Or do you think that, like pretty much every single apologist's position, any investigation beyond the surface reveals monumental fatal issues with this point? Let me know in the comments below. That's it for this one, so what do you think? Do you think that the idea that some kind of abiogenesis slash primordial soup idea is integral to holding on to an atheistic position, and without holding something like that, one has a huge reason to not be an atheist? Or do you think my responses thoroughly deal with the problems with that line of thought? Do you have a different response that I missed? Let me know in the comments. Overall, I give this video a 7 face palmy Mr. Jesuses out of 10. It was a short, so I have to take that into consideration. While the video raises some potentially valid questions about the origins of life, the way they are framed and argued lacks nuance. The critiques of evolutionary theory and atheism seem oversimplified and fail to grapple with the full context and complexity of these scientific and philosophical debates. The fact that it recognizes that it isn't necessarily conclusive is a good start, but then takes it in the exact wrong way, the other way. As for the title, Atheist is the default position for the claim of theism. Therefore, for anyone to put forth that they are not an atheist, the intellectually honest thing to do is to present evidence for the existence of their god. And this one is nothing more than a presumption. Not great. The intellectual honesty and accuracy are lacking, though I would say that the delivery is reasonably clear and accessible. Though honestly, if you enjoy this, you can honestly show that by honestly hitting the honest like button. Though my content is much more accessible through hitting that subscribe button if you haven't already for fresh made content. And speaking of intellectually fresh, I need to give an extra thanks to my fresh as heck patrons. Calamitous Anima, Sora, Longhaired Lefty, Musical Ocelot, Ooga Booga Luga, Anonymous Netizen, Angel, Tarek Akasab, Jamabam, Kai Henningsen, and Triple Towel, who are all the extra goodness sealed in the container that is my channel. If you would like to seal in the goodness, you can join them for as low as a single dollar a month at patreon.com front slash dark of all trades. Every little bit helps me work toward better content, and I hope to get some more things that are coming up. As a slight aside, I was recently cast as a minor role for a voice project, so I'll be working on that as well. But I will make sure it doesn't affect my content here. But I am excited for that. Thank you all for coming with me on this, or for sharing a video on your medias of social, commenting, liking, getting new people interested, and subscribed. All of that really helps the channel. For all of you that do that, thank you. I will keep growing with all of you. And as always, keep learning. So that's why my religion